So what you can see here is a hydrogen generator. It's actually an electrolyzer. And you can see it giving off lots and lots of hydrogen gas, which is what all this bubbling in the liquid is about. Now I'm fascinated by these, but the challenge with these is actually making them because you have to make those plates out of stainless steel and to be honest all that mucking around with stainless steel cutting the plates and drilling them is really quite challenging to do with home tools especially with stainless steel so i came up with this little method of making an electrolyzer a super super easy and it uses this stuff which is stainless steel expended metal lath and the reason this is so much easier is because you can cut this with a pair of tin snips no worries at all so you can cut sections of that make an electrolyzer and then electrolyze it now traditionally what you electrolyze is water, and I'm not electrolyzing water in here, you can see it's this strange colour. It's this strange colour for two reasons, one the stainless steel is dirty because I just made this, and the other one is it's not water in there, it's this stuff. This stuff is urea in solution. So it's actually a urea solution that we're electrolyzing, and we're electrolyzing urea for a very good reason. Water electrolyzes about 1.23 volts. Urea electrolyzes at 0.37 volts. So the voltage requirement for it is very, very much lower. What well, that means is when we burn that hydrogen that's been given off there, the net energy is positive in our favor. We get more energy out than the energy we've put in to actually electrolyze the urea. That's really significant. Now, if you have a look around, you will find um, stuff about urea electrolysis and backing up exactly what I just said, but you won't find much in the way of meat and detail of how to go about doing it. It's just people saying, hey, look at this. So this is about how to build that electrolyzer, what kind of solution of urea to use, and then generate that hydrogen for you. So let's get on with it. To do this, I've got a great big glass jar and some of this stuff. This stuff is expanded metal lath. It's stainless steel. It's really easy to get hold of the stainless steel version where I live because I live near the sea. But you can buy this stuff really easily. Now I have tried stainless steel plates, but to be honest, I find them a bit of a pain to work with. So all you have to do with this stuff is cut a section off and roll it up. It's really quite easy. And you roll it up to fit the size of your vessel it will just slot in there, it'll spring out a little bit to cover the inside. So that's one electrode, we need to make the other electrode, and I'm just going to do that by cutting another section of this lath off with an angle grinder. So it cuts incredibly easy, two of them off, because we need an anode and a cathode. And as you can see, they're just a little bit smaller than the jar they're about to go into. Uh, one of them is going to be uh, in the center, and the other one's gonna be around the edge. I'm guessing that if you wanted to, you could interleave them and roll them up as a single coil. Um, that sounds like a hell of a lot of trouble to me. So I'm just going to roll them up as I suggested. So roll one up tightly. and that will slot in there as the central electrode. Now obviously the minute you finish with that, it's going to want to unwind, so secure it with some cable ties. Okay, so that's the center one secured so we can handle it, uh, handle it a bit. Now we can't just drop it in there and leave it because it'll remove, because these things always want to move. So what we want to do is put something on there to stop it touching the other um, electrode when we put that electrode in. The easiest thing to do is to put some plastic spacers on. Now these are kitchen cabinet spacers, they're blocks, sorry, they're the kind of blocks you use when you're making kitchen cabinets and um, they do the corners. If you position those three around it like that and then you've got your cable ties, pull your cable ties tight. There we go. 
and that will act as a spacer to prevent it touching the other electrode. I'm going to do the other one, then I'm going to wind that up and drop it in. Okay, so there it is wound around. As you can see, we've got the inner core, spacer blocks, outer core, and you can see this blue wire. This blue wire is actually 1.5 mil uh, twisted strand household wire, and it's rated at something like 20 amps. So plenty of current cap carrying capability on that wire. If you need more, put more wires around it. All you do is strip the wire back, So you've got a good length, find yourself a reasonable hole somewhere around that you can uh, twist this in, feed it through a few of them if you can, give it, give it a twist until it's nice and tight and then put a dollop of this stuff around it which is all purpose sealant and that will stop you, um, stop any electrolyte getting to it. So I'm just going to coil this around and do exactly the same thing with the central one, there it is. bit like um, sewing actually. You go an incredibly fast and easy to make electrolyzer without all that tedious mucking around with stainless steel plates. It's pretty much ready to go actually, but obviously the reason you would do this would be to collect the hydrogen gas that it's going to generate. So this thing came with a lid. The lid's got a little seal around it, but I might put extra seal on there. But obviously if we put the lid on, we want some way of collecting the hydrogen. Now this is a specialist part, it's a seal. It's a valve seal that takes some tube which is lying around somewhere. Don't know where it is, I'll find some tube. It takes a blue tube that exactly fits in there and forms a gas seal. So all I have to do is drill out some holes which I've done, pop that in there and then bolt it on, put a bit of PTFE or sealant around that and then I'm ready to stick my blue tube in there. And you'll notice two more holes. And then to take the wires, so the wires can then come through. And again, we can pop a little bit of sealant on there so that we can seal that whole thing. And the only escape point is here for the hydrogen gas. Of course, we'd want to um, refill it. So we might want another hole in there with a valve on it so we can put some more water in there. But um, I'm not that worried about it. If I do want to, want to undo it, then I'll just suffer the stresses on these joints here until I see how well it works and whether it's going to be a bit more of a production type or not. But basically that's all there is to it. And there it is, generating lots and lots of gas. So there you go, perhaps the easiest uh, hydrogen generator you can actually make. Now it's running at uh, 21 volts, 3 amps, so 62 watts, so it's not taking a huge amount of power. Um, and I just threw that together for the video. Obviously you could play around with those plate geometries, maybe interleave them, maybe make them S-shapes, maybe dual coil them together, maybe multi-point wire attachment. There's a lot of playing around with the geometry. But the main thing is how easy it was to make. Um, I've tried the other electrolyzers and to be honest, cutting all those stainless steel plates, drilling them and bolting them and using those nylon rods to keep them all separate, I found just an absolute pain. So this is certainly a much easier way to make an electrolyzer than using stainless steel plates. Now the thing to do obviously is to get a flow rate for the amount of energy that we're putting in. And the reason it's this colour incidentally, it's not uh, a clear colour, is because um, obviously the stainless steel was dirty, I just cut it off the sheet, you saw me do it. So there's a bit of dirt in there, but this is not water, this is uh, urea. This is in fact a urea electrolyzer, which is this stuff in water, this is the urea. Urea is a fertiliser, it's uh, singularly the greatest waste product on the planet. Water electrolyzers at 1.23 volts, urea electrolyzers at 0 0.037 volts, and that's a 33% solution of urea. So it should take a hell of a lot less energy to generate the hydrogen than it would do to use water and KOH, which is your traditional hydrogen um, electrolyte that you find in these electrolyzers. Urea electrolysis has been investigated quite extensively, although it's quite difficult to find the um, facts of the matter. You can find an awful lot of urea electrolysis going on if you search for it, because you can get a net positive out of it. That is, the amount of energy you put in there for getting the hydrogen out is less than you would get back for burning the hydrogen. And that's because the bond energy in urea is slower than the bond energy in water. So preferentially, the urea breaks down first into nitrogen and hydrogen. You get the hydrogen. 
we can burn that in an engine and it would produce more energy doing that than it took to actually get the hydrogen out of there. So I thought that was cool. And I thought the only reason uh, people weren't investigating that is because these electrolyzers are just a pain to make. So I thought I'd show you a really quick and easy method of how to make electrolyzers and how to generate hydrogen from urea and then hopefully encourage you to investigate that so that we have a look at this and have a possibility of onboard hydrogen generation where we get a net positive power output. Anyway, I hope that was of interest and thank you very much for watching.